and welcome to Inside Healthcare. We're coming to you from the urgency room at Venice Heights, and we're here to talk about before the cold and flu season some advice from a physician here at the urgency room. And pleased to have with us Dr. Christy Trusso. Glad to have you back with us again. Thank you so much. So we are getting coming up into that cold and flu season, and I think the first um, thing that you know people, kids especially, might get a fever and stuff. So. Um, I, I know as a parent and now as a grandparent, I'm always concerned when kids get a fever. How do you treat it? When do you go see the doctor? What advice do you have for people? Right, so fever is temperature greater than 100.4. That's how the medical community would define that. Um, treating the fever, you can use Tylenol and ibuprofen to bring the fever down. That helps children be much more comfortable. It prevents dehydration from the fever. The question of when to see a doctor when you have a fever, it can be a little bit complicated. For young children, particularly young infants and uh, children with medical problems, seeing a doctor right away is important. Other children, if they have mild symptoms and fever but seem to be otherwise doing okay, can be monitored at home for a short period of time by their parents, but certainly if the fever is persistent or worsening, it should be evaluated by a doctor. And how do you know um, what's the cause of the fever, if it's a virus or bacterial? And then how do you treat them, I guess? Yeah, so both, so virus and bacteria can cause fever. Fever is simply a symptom of illness. It's not a disease in and of itself. Um, so when you go to see the doctor, the doctor will do a good history and exam, look for other signs and symptoms such as cough, sore throat, abdominal pain, to help lead them down the direction of what's causing the fever. And um, if they're of uh, school age, should they be kept at home or when should they go to school with a fever? So really the, a child should never be sent to school with a fever. Any t uh, every school is going to have a specific, a different specific number. However, as a medical community, a temperature greater than 100.4 is defined as a fever. The child should stay home from school until they are fever free for 24 hours without medications. So it's not enough to, to just have the fever come down after they're given Tylenol or Ibuprofen. Uh, it, they need to be without that fever, without medication for 24 hours before returning to public. With the, the flu coming annual, making a visit here every winter and stuff, um, and it is recommended that um, children and adults all get a flu shot, so what think, would be that recommendation? So I think getting a flu shot is a great way to prevent illness. It prevents uh, illness not only for yourself, but as more and more of us get it, it prevents the ability of the virus to spread in communities. So getting a flu shot is a good public health measure as well as prevention for illness for yourself. What, from age, what, six months or older or something like that? So flu vaccine is available for children six months and older. Uh, the first time a child gets a flu vaccine, it's actually a two-dose uh, vaccine, but after that it's just one vaccine each year. The flu vaccine does have to be administered every year because the flu virus is a little tricky and it changes exactly uh, which type it is through, mm -hmm. through the season. So each year uh, we should be getting flu shots. And that, that's for our parents especially too. Exactly. So if you have, if you yourself uh, have children, you should get the vaccine both for yourself and for prevention for spreading to others. And if the grandparents, they should be getting, is there a, a vaccine for older people as well then? Yep, so flu vaccine uh, particularly is encouraged for people with uh, chronic medical conditions or age o older than 65. But again, just a great public health measure to prevent the spread in communities. Are there other, other things that parents can do to ke help keep their kids healthy during this upcoming cold and flu season? Well, the healthy habits, so making sure proper nutrition, getting enough sleep, getting enough water, and then of course good hand washing uh, are really important. Also, again, you know, most of, these, most of these illnesses are spread person to person, so staying home and keeping your child home when they are ill can help keep others healthy. Other advice for our parents? Good hand washing is really a big thing, and then keeping up with your general health maintenance with your regular doctor. And again, we're at the urgency room at Venice Heights. Do you have some other locations around the Twin Cities? So uh, we do. We see children and adults at all three of our locations, Egan and Woodbury, as well as here in Venice Heights. Dr. Christy Trussell, thank you so much for being with us. Thank Always you for great advice. Me. Thank you. And we'll be back with more right after this.
You're going to need me. You're going to need us. All of us. You're going to need our help with your water. Your air. Your food. You're going to need our determination. Our compassion. You're going to need the next generation of leaders to face the challenges the future will bring. And we promise we'll be there when you need us. Many of our heroes coming home from wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have a new battle, unemployment. Hello, I'm Rocky Lynn. I'm Sergeant Dejan Farrell. And I'm Captain Ron Jarvie. The unemployment rate for today's veteran is 12%. That's twice the average of others living here in the heartland. This year, tribute to the troops, the armed forces, and members of the Upper Midwest ME Chapter are asking you to help. Hire today's veteran. To hire today's veteran, visit PositivelyMinnesota.com slash veterans. Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Saving the eyesight of young kids is what a new national initiative is all about. And the idea behind Lions Kids Sight USA is all about as well. So to tell us about this, and we're pleased to have with us Matt Johnson with one of the local Lions Clubs. So thank you for being with us and telling us what's going on here in Minnesota as well. My pleasure, thank you. So what is Kids Eyesight all about? Well, so Kids Sight USA is a mission de devised by the Lions Club International to, um, to focus on early detection and prevention of vision conditions found in kids. And EYES has been a, a mission of the Lions Club for ever since I think it first started. That's right? correct, yeah. Actually, the Lions Club founded in 1917 in Chicago. Wow. And in 1925, Helen Keller addressed our membership at a convention. Um, and charged us to be uh, knights of the seeing and hearing impaired. And so this is taking it to a newer step of, this is aimed at um, what age of children and wh 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 how are you detecting yeah. if there's problems with the kids and stuff? Yeah, so early detection is the um, primary importance in kids because the eyes are developing as they grow. And that first six years of their life, they can actually correct vision impairments if those those issues are found early enough. And so finding them early and helping them get the, the corrective measures they need is, is, the, is the key. And typically kids aren't tested for their eyesight until um, as they're entering kindergarten? Yeah, most kids don't really get vision screening until, yeah, the kindergarten ECFE programs typically offer that. A little bit fours younger. and fives. Correct. And a lot of times it's when the kid is having a hard time learning or isn't paying attention or focusing in school where they actually refer the child for additional vision screening. And it's because they can't see maybe or right. they're, they're having some vision problems? Well, it's been said by um, learning professionals that 80% of learning is visual. That's incredible. So if you can't yeah. see well, you can't learn well, which is obviously true. So, so um, you're a, a dad as well. What do you think of this program offering yeah. this through the clubs? And yeah, correct. Um, you know, my kids are now out of that age range, boy, but if, if I had this opportunity when they were younger, I would have been all over it, you know. Nothing speaks louder than a concerned parent. And so getting more kids in front of the camera and the equipment that we have is really going to, what's going to bring this program to the next level. So you brought some of the equipment with us. Why don't you tell us about it? How does it work? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's two different um, cameras that the Lions Club use. It's a um, friendly, a friendly face on yeah. the front. The, this is the plus optics version, and it has the ability to detect several different vision impairments uh, with just a, a 10 second screening. It uses a really low level light, uh, infrared light, to perform some different measurements in the child's eyes. We're looking for things like strobisms, where one eye wanders, um, the nearsighted, farsighted, cataracts, um, stigmatism. And then, of course, the amblyopia. And you can detect all this at a very young age? 
That's correct. Yeah, the software in these cameras is amazing. It's light years ahead of what we remember the old cover one eye and look at the eye chart um, as a kid. So it, it's really surprising to me that we can't get more kids in front of this equipment. And you can't get them in front of the equipment because getting access to the children is Absolutely. Yeah. So awareness is the biggest issue that we face. Um, most parents are afraid that you know the, the light could affect the child or they're not familiar with the equipment and how it works. And so getting the word out that this is safe, easy, um, and, and really should be performed for all kids, not only just as they're young, but on an annual basis oh. because as they grow, their eyes change. So, and again, technology, how does, this, how does it detect all these different things that you're mentioning? Yeah, like I said, it uses a low-level infrared light to basically perform a couple different measurements on the child's eyes very quickly. And so when, the, when we turn it on and we pick an age for the child. And, and the age, what, what does that so mean? Because of the, the ways the eyes grow and change, it, 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 uh, it hones the technology to, to better oh, okay. fit that of the age of the child. Because as your eyes grow, they change. And so mm -hmm. there's different tolerances set in the equipment to help with that detection and ultimately refer the child on to an optometrist or ophthalmologist for additional follow-up and exam. So this and is just the a screen. the Lions Club doesn't um, pick one group over another to send the child to and things like that. It's up to the, of course. Up to the parents yeah. and stuff. I've, I've learned that approximately 99% of people will have insurance coverage for the actual eye exam. What we're finding more and more need is, is in the follow-up care that's recommended by the eye care professional. So whether that's any kind of uh, exercise regimen, um, the hardware for eyeglasses, or even surgery in some cases, um, that, that's the area where the Lions are helping out financially with kids. So specifically, you're, you said you're with the Woodbury Lions Club, and you've done a number of screenings already, a yeah. few hundred yeah. or something like so that? So just this spring, we started, the Woodbury Club started doing screenings in Woodbury. Uh, we've screened at seven different schools and over 530 kids of that we've referred 33 children for follow-up wow. exams. Yeah. 33 kids that may have slowed their learning if they hadn't been detected that yeah. there was an issue and things. There's been all sorts of success stories. Um, one in particular was a little girl who could read her ABCs just fine up front, but she wouldn't respond when she was pointing to things on the board, and the teacher thought maybe there was something more going on. She just couldn't see the board. So you have a screenings, they're free to the participants and the families? Yeah, it's free for everyone. The Lions Club teamed up with the MCCA, that's the Minnesota Child Care Association, mm -hmm. and purchased several cameras that are available throughout the Twin Cities and the outstate out Minnesota. And uh, the Lions volunteer our time to come out, perform the screenings. All we need is a consent from the parents that we can actually perform the screening for their child. Because if we can't get them in front of the camera, we can't tell whether or not they need assistance. So, and the ages that you do a lot of the screening is, what are the ages? Yeah, the ideal candidates for our club are between six months and six years of age. Six months. So yeah. how do you get a six month to look in your, your camera here? It's fun because um, actually what we usually have is the daycare provider or the parent will hold the child on their shoulder facing the opposite direction. And then the lion will um, screen the child using the camera. And as you can see, there's a little face on there. And it has some blinking lights and makes a funny noise. So um, it catches their attention. Exactly. And we only need just a couple of a seconds where they actually focus at the camera, and it catches that data that we need. Within a few seconds. That's correct. A couple of seconds. Yep. Wow, that's amazing. And um, uh, throughout the state of Minnesota, then thousands of or hundreds of kids have been tested already? Yeah, thousands of kids. I mean, just from our district, the 5M district, which encompasses most of the north and the eastern Twin Cities area, I know that we've screened over 1,800 children. Wow, um, that's awesome. There's approximately 2,400 being screened this week through the Head Start program. Um, and then thousands more scheduled already for this fall. So. Do you feel like there's some ages or some population that you're not reaching with this screening? You know, right now, some of the... Um, if you're going into daycares and preschools yeah. and things like that, but... Daycares and preschools have been, have been pretty good targets, you know, because they'll, they'll congregate 100 to 200 children on a daily basis so we can get access to those kids mm -hmm. through their, um, their leadership and the, the directors there. However, the home-based daycares has been a very tough uh, market for us to reach. I know in Woodbury alone, we have 101 home-based daycares. Wow. Um, just guesstimating 10 kids at each location that would fall into our demographic. 
you know, that's that's another thousand kids we could screen if we could find a way to uh, to get them out. So. You know, and the preschool and daycare is very expensive, so I would think that yeah. there's a whole other part part of the population that can't afford that that their kids are not right. going to be able to be screened. Right. How do you um, reach them? We've been doing some work um, to coordinate through our local food shelf to get in front of some of the children mm -hmm. who might be part of that community. Um, otherwise, it really it comes down to referral programs. And, and like I said, a, a concerned parent um, getting us in front of, the, whether it's through the school or through their daycare facility. Yeah, I was thinking when they're so young though, I mean, how do you know that there's an issue, you know? Yeah, and, and they, they don't because a child, if they've lived that way since birth, they don't know how to articulate that they can't see or that things are a little blurry. And so some of the success stories you might find online are just amazing of kids being able to see for the first time and realizing that they don't have to go through life with everything being so blurry. That's got to be so rewarding yeah. though, when you, like you were saying about the, the one child and stuff, yeah. like to see that actually happen. And yeah, one of our members, um, Sarah, um, her daughter was born out on the East Coast and um, she had a condition called retinoblastoma and that was detected in her early childhood screening through the pediatrician, I believe, out there. Um, that same screening isn't mandated or even accepted here in the Midwest for some reason. And so we're trying to replace that, that opportunity with what the Lions are doing here in the, in the community. So you have some screenings coming up in the month of October? We do, we have two, yeah. The first one is on the 17th, um, and then another one on the 24th, so. And it just takes a few minutes, probably waiting in line might be the, <laughs> the longest Yeah, time. a lot of the work is our upfront um, data gathering, scheduling, coordinating the Lion volunteers, and then of course getting the parents to turn in their permission slips because right. the consent form. I was gonna say also I would think like just the, the training to know how to use this, up, this equipment and yeah. stuff too because it's so precise. There is a certification program that we have through the Lions Club um, of which I recently got certified. Oh well, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. In order to use the camera it's really a, a, you know, a couple hour training in terms of just how to operate Just like a video game. <laughs> It is, it is pretty easy. You just point and shoot, so to speak, you know, just get it focused on the eyes and hold it steady. It has to be level um, and about a meter away from the child and the technology does the rest. And so. I understand that you have a little mascot as well that we the do. kids love. We do, yeah. Blinky the bear, he's a hit. Um, he's got he a little kids-site t-shirt as well that he wears to all of our screenings, and it helps set the kids at ease. And of course, when they're done, everybody gets a sticker too. And so. Blinky doesn't blink. His eyes are open, That's correct. right? correct. We got to keep their eyes open, focused on the camera. Um, so if someone wants to get some information about kids' site, or if they want to know where how they mm -hmm. can take part in a, one of the screenings where would they go to? Absolutely. They can reach out through any any channels, obviously. Tell your daycare facility that you'd like the lines to come in and do the screening. Um, that'll make those, those daycare providers much more receptive to us coming out and offering the program. Um, or you can go to the Kids Site USA website. Uh, that's offered through the Lions Club as well. So. Well, Matt Johnson, what an awesome program thank that you. you guys are doing. So thank, thank you. you for doing that. And thank you for taking time out to be with us. My pleasure. Thank you, Jody. Thank you. And we'll have more on Inside Healthcare when we come back. Stay with us. It's the most natural thing for me to dance. But I was tripping and I was falling and didn't even know what multiple sclerosis was. When I perform, I really love connecting with people. It's definitely cool to be able to give someone an experience through virtual reality. Oh my God. I dream sometimes and I see that. Did you go tanning? You're getting so tan. We need some sun. Protect yourself. Protect your friends. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Disaster tips from the objects left behind. 
My home wasn't insured, but you can check your insurance policy now to make sure you're covered. Oh. My savings are lost, but you can put money aside and plan for unexpected disaster costs. We're lost forever, but you can scan important documents now so they survive. For more tips on how to prepare, visit ready.gov. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. We are there, day one, with baby names and a gift that lasts a lifetime. We are there as you grow, protecting you and those you love. We are there when you get your first job, helping you to save for the future. We are there when you marry your sweetheart to help secure your new life together. We are there if the unexpected happens, to help you see life from a new perspective. We are there when you start your next chapter to make sure you get off to a great start. And we are there when you lose your soulmate to help make sure you will be all right. We are with you through life's journey. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. Get to know us and see what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we're going to take another look at a very special way that local cancer survivors are helping young breast cancer patients cope with their diagnosis and treatment. It's a story we first told you about last October. Again, here's Claire's story. Next time, okay. Go ahead, your turn. I was 34. Um, my older daughter was three, and um, my youngest was just about seven months. Okay, Marin's gonna go first. I found a lump, and um, they wanted to proceed with a biopsy right away, and then um, a couple days later I got a phone call and found out that, yep, I sure did, had breast cancers. You know, the message to her when I was diagnosed was that um, mommy is sick, I have cancer, but the doctors are gonna help me get better. I had a lot of great support from friends and family too. Um, they really rallied and that makes, made all the difference in the world. I'm still incredibly grateful. I think that it helped me to take this experience that I had and do something good with it. You know, I just, I want to provide support to let, you know, in general, these young moms know that it's going to be okay. Um, you know, this is, this is something that you can get through, and um, I understand what you're worrying about and um, a lot of times what you're feeling through this process. I think we were matched well in that way, so then we could kind of talk through like, Oh, well, how do you, you know, tell your kids when they're this age? Or how do you, um, you know, deal with when they ask you why you're sick? She's just like my special <laughs> um, angel, you know, um, that just kind of knows what, what happened, what, 
how you feel, you know, how it is to be, you know, like a working mom and going through a scare like that. I get out of the Firefly Sisterhood that I didn't realize. I mean, I thought I was going to be giving back, but I'm getting so much as a survivor um, because I have the opportunity to process still my journey, and it's something that I didn't really know it, that I needed to do until it started to happen. Kind of a, a way for us all to heal and to take, you know, this negative experience and do something really good with it, be a part of something really good. <laughs> all right, bye Mindy. And we'd like to thank Claire and Mindy for sharing their story with us. For more information about the Firefly Sisterhood, go to their website at thefireflysisterhood.org. Again, that's fireflysisterhood.org. Well, that's our program for you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you join us again next time on Inside Healthcare. See you then, everyone.